Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the verse by verse Bible study. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much for your holy written word. Father, we thank you your words are truth. Father, we thank your words are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, we thank you so much your words are making us wise and able to walk in your blessings and in your plans. Father, we thank you so much your words are nourishing us and your words are ministering life to us. Father, we praise you, we worship you and we adore you. And Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray that you show us great and mighty things we do not know and show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we pray that you stretch out your hand right now and minister healing to people, whoever needs healing right now. And Father, we pray you meet their needs and satisfy their desires. And Father, we pray you comfort them, encourage them, strengthen them and grant them peace. Father, we pray you strengthen them to move forward, to overcome, to triumph, to succeed and prosper. And Father, we pray that you keep them as the apple of your eye and preserve their going out and coming in. Father, we pray you preserve them from all evil and preserve their life. Father, we pray for your mighty protection upon them, their families, their households and all their things on every side. And Father, we pray you protect them from all kinds of diseases and pestilences. Father, we thank you for your marvelous, marvelous protection upon them. And Father, we thank you. We are rooted and built up in our Lord Jesus, established in the faith, strong and vigorous in the word of God we have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving in the faith of our Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We are growing in the grace, knowledge and faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our God is good. Our God is great and our God is interested in our life. Our God is interested in protecting us. Our God is interested in, interested in healing us. Our God is interested in uh, blessing us and blessing the work of our hands. See, we serve a God who cares for us. We serve a God who sees us. Not just merely as a spectator but as somebody who sees our problem and helps us and fixes the, the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, be bold and come boldly to the throne of grace and present your request to God and look to Him and set your eyes upon Him and, and ask Him for what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Right? And whenever you pray, you know, we just prayed, you know. Pray with expectation. Knowing that God will do this for us. See, we are believing God for protection. We are believing God for healing. We are believing God to meet our needs. Expect it to come to pass in your life. We are not just mouthing words for, for the sake of saying something. No. We are expecting God to do that for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And our God will fulfill our expectation, our desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right then. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. We will begin from verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for our sake. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You will find that scripture in Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. 
verse 14 that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith hallelujah in the past uh, two messages i think right we have been studying about uh, the curse of the law right if you are going to understand this passage first of all you need to know about uh, the law and you need to know about the covenant of the law and the curse of the law so we looked at the different dispensations that were uh, there during the time of the old testament right beginning from genesis to malachi and then we looked at um, uh, the various covenants that God made with his people. We looked at the covenant that God made with Noah, the covenants he made with Abraham, and then the covenant that God made with uh, Moses and the people of Israel at Mount Sinai. Right? And uh, we also spoke about how um, the covenant of the law, right? the one that God made during um, at Mount Sinai with Moses and the people of Israel, it had both blessings and the curse hallelujah and uh, we also spoke about how the people of israel um, stood in mount gerizim and um, mount ebal and then spoke uh, right um, the words of blessing and also the words of curse and uh, they entered into this covenant with god right hallelujah uh, which had um, blessing for obedience and curse for disobedience hallelujah we spoke about that and today we are going to look at what happened at the beginning right at the very beginning how did curse enter into this earth it's important to understand that see why are we looking at all these things in detail because the bible says we have been redeemed from the curse of the law and then the people who are under the law are under the curse. So you need to know what these things are. What is it? What is the curse of the law? What does it include? Right? And what is it that we are redeemed from? Because if you don't know what you are redeemed from, chances are that you will continue to live under them. Hallelujah. Right? <laughs> One of the greatest examples of this is, um, you know, what happened in the United States of America. See, the slaves were set free uh, during the time of Abraham Lincoln. You have what you call the Emancipation Proclamation, right? And uh, the people were set free, actually. But the people, uh, <laughs> the slave owners, they came up with an idea, right? Because many of uh, the people who were uh, who were slaves, they they were not educated, and uh, it's not like today. You didn't have uh, live updates of what is happening all over the world in the palm of your hand, right? <laughs> Even newspapers were not uh, that prevalent in those days, and not everybody was educated, so not everybody could read and understand what is written, right? And uh, therefore, many people many of uh, the slaves remained as slaves even though they were liberated already by law right just because they did not know <laughs> that they were set free they continued as slaves you understand that so you need to know what is it that you have been redeemed from and if you don't know it then if that thing shows up in your life and if it has been in your life for some time you won't be able to resist it you won't be able to stand against it and drive it out of your life you understand this hallelujah and here we see that our lord jesus christ through the work on um, through the work of redemption which he accomplished on the cross he not only uh, redeemed us from the curse, but he also brought the blessing of Abraham upon us. Right? So through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a double blessing. Right? Double benefit. On one hand, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. On the other hand, we have the blessing of Abraham. So first we will look at what the curse of the law is and what is it that we have been redeemed from. And then we will look at the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. Now, um, let's go to the book of Genesis. Because here you see another very important uh, teaching concerning the curse. And you have to understand this. Hallelujah. So, in the beginning, if you notice in chapter 1, God, um, when he was creating all these things, he looked at everything he created and said, it is good. Right? God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. And then finally, God saw that it was very good. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, essentially, he, he just made everything good. When God um, was creating all these things, He only filled this earth with good things. Right? He made light. He made birds. He made animals. He made things that were required for life. Right? To be sustained in this earth. So, God made only good things. Hallelujah. And then he blessed man and he also blessed the animals. So, to begin with this earth did not know sin. There was no unrighteousness in this earth. Right? There was no sin in this earth. There was nothing that produced curse in this earth. Right? The original creation plan is blessing, life, light and goodness. That's what you see to begin with. Hallelujah. And if you go to chapter 2, we see the same. Right? God plants a garden for Adam and gives it into his hand and asks him to you know, keep it and to tend to it. Hallelujah. And then we see God, you know, uh, creating this huge river, right, for the express purpose of watering the garden. And then after it watered the garden, it went on to water nations. This was one humongous river, right, big one. Hallelujah. You know, it, it just, Im you have to imagine this. If this river that watered the garden was so big, imagine the size of the garden. See, this river after it watered the garden it you know divided into four tributaries the tributaries were were not ordinary brooks or streams no they were huge rivers rivers that encompassed a whole nation right hallelujah and one of them was euphrates which which is still one of the biggest rivers on the planet Right? So imagine the original river, how big it should have been. And if the river that watered the garden was that big, what would have been the size of the garden? <laughs> right? Hallelujah. Food for thought. Think about it. And then, of course, God gave this great commandment. Right? And before that, you see, you know, gold and. Uh, uh, and precious stones that God had put here on this planet for man, for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And then God gives a commandment to man, right? Forbidding him to eat from the knowledge, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was one tree that he should not partake of. That fruit was not for him. Right? God gave an express command very clearly plainly stating that he should not eat of it, of that tree. Hallelujah. And um, everything else was his. The tree of life <laughs> and all the other trees were for him. Hallelujah. And um, of course then, God again gives a great gift for Adam. He created Eve and presented him to, I mean presented her to Adam. Hallelujah. So again, you see only good things. God gave Adam a, a suitable com a companion, right? Someone who is comparable to him and like him created in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. Someone who, with whom he can have fellowship. Someone who will help him to accomplish the, the blessing, right? Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, right? 
fellow heir of the blessing fellow heir of that dominion and that authority and the ability to subdue <laughs> somebody who can work with him can you see this that was a good gift then right? so you see only good things from god so where did the curse come from what is the origin of curse we see that in chapter 3 here we see the serpent right tempting uh, eve hallelujah and eve succumbed to the temptation yielded to the temptation and uh, sinned against god and then she gave the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to adam and adam disobeyed the commandment of god and hearkened to the voice of his wife hallelujah see eve hearkened to the voice of the devil adam hearkened to the voice of eve you see this right and um, so both of them sinned and uh, god he came to visit him as he usually does and uh, let's pick up the conversation there right um uh, verse uh, 10 onwards okay let's let's just read from verse uh, 8 and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden sin always does that it moves you away from god see once they sinned they lost the glory right once they lost the glory they were naked and so they had to sew fig leaves fig leaves together and made themselves aprons hallelujah and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard your voice in the garden i was afraid because i was naked and i hid himself and and i hid myself and he said who told thee that thou was naked hast thou eaten of the tree which i commanded thee that thou should not eat see this is what sin is transgressing the commandment given by god hallelujah and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree and i did eat right and god asked the woman what is this that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat here we see a lesson here right it's a very important lesson man is accountable to god right all of us whether you know it or whether you don't know it whether you like it or whether you don't like it you cannot escape from this reality every human being is accountable to god we will all stand before god and give account of the things that we have done hallelujah and god is the righteous judge and and he is watching over everybody every human being right <laughs> hallelujah and um, th- this is something that is taught right from the beginning see that's why god gave a commandment if he was not accountable to him there's no point in giving a com- commandment right god gave a commandment to him to obey and um, when he violated the commandment there were consequences and also god came and asked him right why did you do it why did you violate my commandment right and he functions as a judge here you say this you see the same thing in chapter 4 you see the same thing in chapter 6 you see the same thing in chapter 18 and 19 in genesis the very first book of the bible teaches human beings that we are accountable to god and our god is the righteous judge right it's a very important teaching anybody who knows this teaching and believes this teaching they will not yield to sin right the way other people yield i'm not saying just because they know this that they will never sin no but anybody who has this teaching in them they will fear god right <laughs> and they will avoid sin and they will make an effort to avoid sin 
anybody who has this teaching in them and anybody who believes in this god made me god is the righteous judge i am accountable to god i have to stand before him and give an account for my life <laughs> hallelujah there are consequences for my actions hallelujah the person who believes these things will not be so quick to sin hallelujah and if everybody on this planet believed this this planet would be a wonderful planet <laughs> hallelujah most of the stuff that you see in the world you won't see yeah. this is a very important teaching a fundamental teaching in the bible and we should all embrace it and believe in it strongly because more and more people are walking away from it they just want to do their own thing they don't want to be accountable to god you know this is one of the root causes for atheism right <laughs> this is one of the root causes for atheism the root cause for a- atheism is not a scientific enlightenment no 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 that's something that they came up with because they don't want to be accountable to god because they just want to follow their own desires instead of obeying god you understand that this this is one of the fundamental reasons for atheism and all all, all the other things associated with it right because man does not want to be accountable to god man just wants to you know go after his own desires and fulfill his own desires right you understand this all right keep the thought in mind so here god is holding each one of them accountable god questioned adam and then eve and when um eve said to the serpent begill me and i did eat he started pronouncing judgments right uh look at what god said to the serpent verse 14 the lord god said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle above every beast of the field upon your belly thou shall go and dust shall thou eat all the days of your life this is god speaking to the serpent the snake the beast right and uh, it looks like before the curse came upon the serpent it was not crawling on the floor like it does now right hallelujah it looks like it was able to stand upright like other animals it does seem to have a, a what you call the vertebrae right now it is <laughs> it's, it's like just crawling on the ground hallelujah all right so um this is the first time we see curse entering the earth prior to this you just see blessing hallelujah we see blessing upon man we see blessing upon animals right we see god's goodness being manifested in various ways but we do not see the curse the curse came in as a result of the sin sin is the root cause root cause of all curse hallelujah you sh- you-, you should get to know this right these are fundamental teachings that every human being should know right curse causeless does not come the the root cause of the curse is sin hallelujah hallelujah to jesus without sin there is no curse without sin there is no death right both death and curse entered into this world because of sin sin opened the door for curse sin opened the door for death hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and when we looked at the the curse of the law we saw how curse was for sin right for obedience you have blessing for disobedience or in other words for sin you have the curse and we saw that both in leviticus and in deuteronomy chapter 28 and we also saw the same in deuteronomy chapter 27 where the curse was pronounced by the six tribes who were standing upon mount ebal hallelujah hallelujah to jesus right okay so keep those thoughts in mind uh, you need to know this see this was always not a part of this earth today because all we know is this uh, life where you see curse and death we assume that this is this was always a part of man's life 
right? Because we have never seen this earth in its original condition, where there was only life, blessing, and goodness. Right, so we think that uh, you know death and curse are uh, are part and parcel of man's life. Right, sometimes good things happen, sometimes bad things happen. So we we assume that that's how the experience is. We assume this is the way it is always, and this is how it always has been. Right, but the Bible teaches you the truth. It gives us a revelation on how it was before sin. and what happened after sin right so you need to understand sin as the root cause for curse and death if you understand that people won't be so flippant you know about sin right they won't be too quick to sin because you understand this thing is a dangerous thing that it produces death it produces curse i don't want to mess around with this hallelujah See, because man does not understand these things, he, he. This is one of the reasons why people are too quick to sin because they don't understand how dangerous sin is. You understand this, right? And then, in verse chapter, in verse fifteen, the very next verse, God is speaking to the devil here, right? Verse fourteen, he is speaking to the serpent, the snake. Verse fifteen, he is speaking to the devil, who used the serpent to tempt Eve. Right here, he is saying, "I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between your seed and her seed." Right. This is the first time we see Jesus being promised. Right, and Jesus being uh, uh, the Messiah. Right, and the virgin birth of Messiah being revealed to us. Right, her seed. it shall bruise your head talking about messiah bruising the head of the devil right and uh, the devil bruising his heel this is what happened in in calvary right hallelujah and um, so we see the judgment upon uh, the serpent and the judgment upon the devil and then the judgment upon the woman here unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply your sorrow and your uh, conception in sorrow thou shall bring forth children see originally be fruitful and multiply was the blessing right and it was supposed to come without sorrow you 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 see these things you if you understand these things you will understand uh, props chapter 10 verse 22 better the blessing of the lord it makes rich and it adds no sorrow to it see the blessing enables fruitfulness without sorrow when god blessed adam and eve saying be fruitful multiply that fruitfulness was supposed to be done uh, supposed to happen without sorrow but now because of sin in order to become fruitful the woman has to experience what sorrow and pain hallelujah in sorrow thou shall bring forth children right this is I, this again is part of the curse right the curse impacted our ability to be fruitful do you see this right and then and to adam right? and to adam he said because you hearkened unto the voice of your wife and has eaten of the tree of which i commanded thee saying thou shall not eat of it so it does not matter who tells you to disobey god right if you hearken to your voice to their voice instead of hearkening to the voice of god you're messing up <laughs> oh no my wife told me that's why i did if somebody else had told i wouldn't have bothered you know my uncle whom i respect so greatly you know he told me to do it so that's why you know no it doesn't matter no no our king told us to do this right you remember in exodus the king you know commanded that all the children sh- um, should be killed all the male children right first he commanded uh, the midwives saying you know kill the children the male children 
the bible says those two women feared god and because they feared god they did not obey the king they said we don't care if the king tells we fear god <coughs> hallelujah so it doesn't matter if it is the king or if it is the wife or if it is some your parents or if it is your children or if it is somebody else right you should always exalt god's voice above everybody else and because adam failed to do that this is what happened cursed is the ground for your sake now we see the curse impacting the earth in which we live right the curse came upon the serpent upon the devil upon the woman now upon adam and because adam disobeyed and adam was the ruler of the planet the curse impacted the earth over which he was the ruler right curse is the ground for your sake again you see the curse impacting the fruitfulness of adam see previously adam was blessed and he sows a seed it just produces right there was just life all around but now the curse is working and because the curse is work- working the bible says in the next part in sorrow thou shall eat of it all the days of your life previously there was no sorrow there was no pain there was no toil right he worked but there was no sorrow in the work he worked but it was not toil it was not painful right his work was blessed it was just glory life and blessing right now because of the curse his work become became harder it became filled with sorrow it became painful and therefore you see the statement in sorrow thou shall eat of it all the days of your life and look at it thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee previously the earth produced what whatever you saw right it was not producing thorns and thistles today if you leave the earth alone you know if you, if you have a plot of land right and if you just don't plant anything in it you just leave it alone after some days you will see that there are thorns and there are thistles in that in that part of land you didn't plant it but it brings it forth <laughs> have you noticed this so if you want something useful you have to plant you have to plow you have to water you have to fertilize you have to protect but for thorns and thistles you don't have to do any of that it just just comes do you see this right why curse right and thou shall eat the herb of the field and look at verse 19 in the sweat of your face shall thou eat bread sweat indicating that you are working hard you are toiling hallelujah it's difficult it's hard that's why you are sweating okay right? in the sweat of your face thou shall eat bread till thou return unto the ground now we see another part of the curse death right previously man was actually originally man was made to live forever right and he was supposed to partake of the tree of life right now because he violated the commandment of god transgressed the commandment of god and sinned death has come into his life that again is part of that same curse right there are two things you have to notice the first impact of this uh, of the sin was not this physical death you see how the glory departed immediately right as soon as they sinned the bible says they were their eyes were opened and they saw they were naked right previously adam was not blind see but he was clothed with glory that's why they did not know that they were naked right they were clothed with glory you you if you go and study the bible you will see learn how the bible talks about spiritual things as clothing for us right righteousness right means being clothed in white you remember in the book of revelation how how often does the bible say clothe yourself with these good things kindness compassion and stuff like that okay right? time and again you will notice how spiritual things are considered clothing the bible says god clothes himself with the light 
or in other words glory before sin adam was clothed in a similar way with the glory right bible says in psalm 8 that he was crowned with glory and honor you understand this right but because of sin the glory departed and instead of ha- be, and instead he made himself a clothing made of fig leaves right okay so you keep that in mind what happened right at that moment was he died inside in his spirit you remember god said if you eat of it surely you will die let's go back and look at that statement chapter 2 verse 17 chapter 2 verse 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shall surely die notice the bible says in the day you eat of it you will die we know adam lived <laughs> for hundreds of years after he con- uh, he ate of the fruit but god said in the day that thou eat thereof thou shall surely die how did he die on that day he died inside his heart spiritual death entered into him you can see that in ephesians chapter 2 go with me to ephesians chapter 2 look at the very first verse it says and you who were dead in trespasses and sins this was our condition right you remember our lord jesus told about the pharisees on the outside they were like whited sepulchers but inside they were like dead men's bones right so outside although the, we were breathing and we were doing things and we were living inside we were dead because of sin that spiritual death that's what impacted man first then later right the sp- uh, the physical death also happened so uh, that part is described here in verse 19 in the sweat of your face thou shall eat bread till thou return into the unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and to dust thou shall return right it is because of sin curse and death became a part of man's life that was not the original design and desire of god if you go and look at the book of revelation you will notice that it is not the design of god in the for our future see you see the bible says god creates a new heaven and a new earth right in revelation chapter 21 verse 1 this current earth and heaven will pass away right and then in the new heaven the new earth there is only righteousness like how it was in the beginning there is only righteousness right and then the bible says god will wipe away all tears from their eyes there shall be no more death neither sorrow all these things will be totally wiped out in the new heaven and the new earth nor crying neither shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away right all the impact of what has happened because of that original sin will will be removed totally and completely this earth itself will be removed and when god creates the new heaven and new earth no curse again only good things only life only blessing only the presence of god hallelujah hallelujah to jesus do you see this right but we don't have to wait until the new heaven and the new earth are created <coughs> in this life you can be redeemed from the curse of the law and through jesus we have been redeemed from the curse of the law <laughs> hallelujah see this is why you should know what the curse does and if you know what the curse does you also know what you are redeemed from and we have been redeemed from these things hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we will study these things in more detail in the next message thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon